Here's how the sprite engine works. Every single sprite card revolves around the number 2. Level 2, Link 2, and Rank 2. By controlling any level 2 monster, you can special summon any sprite monster from your hand, or you can special summon them from your deck using Sprite Starter, and each sprite monster has a different on-field effect. Red and Carrot protect you from hand traps and add to your end board, since red can negate monster effects and carrot can negate spell and traps. Meanwhile, Blue and Jet search for any sprite card in your entire deck upon their special summon. Blue allows you to search for any sprite monster, and Jet allows you to search for any sprite speller trap, usually a sprite smashers or sprite double cross to strengthen end boards, or sprite starter if you need access to more level 2 bodies. And these bodies can be used to facilitate the sprite extra deck monsters. Sprite Elf, which can revive any level, link, or rank 2 monster from the graveyard at quick effect speed. Sprite Sprint, which can foolish any level 2 monster, and Gigantic Sprite, which can special summon any level 2 monster directly from your deck. What's done with these extra deck pieces will often depend on what deck they're placed in, but a single sprite starter gives you enough level 2 bodies to go into any of these extra deck monsters, making it really valuable for decks that have specific level 2 monsters they want to summon or foolish. The sprite's engine's ratios are fluid and will often vary on the deck using them. Some decks run a very expansive sprite engine consisting of 3 blue, 3 jet, and 3 starter for consistency, as well as 1 red, 1 carrot, and 1 smashers and or double cross to strengthen end boards, alongside multiple gigantic, elf, and or sprints in their extra deck. Other decks will sometimes run a smaller sprite package, however, consisting of only 1 jet, a smashers, and sometimes 1 blue. This is to take advantage of Dehark, the Dark Charmer, which can revive an opponent's sprite blue while giving you something beneficial to search. And some decks will only run sprite monsters in the extra deck. This is because most of the main decks don't synergize with level 2 monsters, but level 2 monsters are still beneficial in some way to the strategy. Now, let's get into what sprite cards can actually do. Starting off with the monster card lineup. Sprite Blue is a dark level 2 thunder monster that can be special summoned from the hand by controlling either a level or rank 2 monster once per turn. And when it's special summoned, you can add any sprite monster from your deck to your hand. Essentially, Blue acts as one of the keys to the entire engine, in a similar way to how Stratos acts as the key searcher for hero decks, and gives sprite a ton of consistency which is why decks that rely on sprite engines will run blue at 3 copies. What sprite monster you search will depend on your current situation, as sprite has a number of versatile options to suit your hand and the game state. You could search for sprite red. Red, like blue, is a level 2 thunder monster that can special summon itself from your hand once per turn, provided you control a level 2 monster. But unlike blue, red is a fire monster, and you can also summon itself out if you control a link 2 monster, but not a rank 2 axes monster. The reason why you'd want red specifically is because it's a really effective tool at playing around common hand traps, such as ash blossom and effect veiler. You see, red's on-field effect allows you to tribute a level, link, or rank 2 monster you control when your opponent activates a monster effect in order to negate that effect, and if you tributed a link or rank 2 monster, you get to destroy that monster as well. This makes it an incredible end board tool, as not only does red provide you with a monster negate for your opponent's turn, it can also be used to remove bodies from your opponent's field. This is particularly important when facing other sprite decks, as by removing a level 2 body from the field, you can cut off access to all of the sprite monsters in their hand and prevent them from comboing. But if you're less worried about Ash Blossom and Effect Veiler, and are more worried about Imperm and Evenly Matched, you can instead choose to search for Sprite Carrot. Carrot has the same summon condition as Sprite Red, allowing you to summon if you control a level or link to monster, and its on-field effect is quite similar, but instead of negating monster effects, Sprite Carrot can instead tribute a level, link, or rank 2 monster to negate the effect of a spell or trap card, and just like with red, if you tributed a link or rank 2 monster, you get to destroy that card. Essentially, Carrot is another excellent piece of endboard interaction that also plays around a few common hand traps and board breakers, and being able to destroy the spell and trap card makes an effective counter to cards like Mystic Mine. In general, red and carrot are excellent pieces to the sprite engine that makes the deck's end board a lot stronger. But in the TCG, you'll only ever see them played at around one copy each, if at all. This is because of how searchable red and carrot are, as blue, starter, and gigantic can get you either one or both very easily, allowing you to customize your end board depending on the matchup. And decks that run a smaller sprite engine will often choose not to run either, because they don't search the deck like blue or jet do. But in the OCG, sprite red and carrot are run at three in sprite decks. This is because a recent limitation of both jet and starter on the ban list, which makes the deck a lot less accessible. So you have to play more copies of red and carrot to guarantee that you see them in order to play through hand traps while also letting you use your blue to search and find jet specifically. But even in the TCG, there is still one more sprite monster which is played less often than both red and carrot, Sprite Pixies. It has the same summon condition as blue, so it can be brought up by controlling a level or rank 2 monster, and its effect is the least relevant of the entire sprite monster core. During damage calculation, where a link, rank, or level 2 monster you control battles, you can send sprite pixies from your hand or field to the graveyard to increase the attack and defense of your link, rank, or level 2 monster by the attack of your opponent's monster until the end of the turn, with this effect being a hard once per turn. Most decks that use a sprite engine will disregard pixies, especially something like runic sprite which rarely gets the chance to use the battle phase. But even though it's definitely the worst sprite monster in the engine, pixies still has a fair amount of utility. And this is because one of the key issues with sprite is how weak their stats are, as they're a low attack and make it difficult for sprite to get over problematic boss monsters and OTK your opponent. Pixies solves that issue by ensuring that your sprite monsters are always going to be able to beat over something with a high attack stat that sprite would usually struggle with by battle. It can even be used defensively, 
As your opponent goes to the battle phase of their turn with the intent to beat over your IP Mascarina, you can use Elf and Starter to special summon Blue to search Pixies and have them waste their battle phase. Although most decks will usually skip out on Pixies as an engine piece in Sprite, since like Red and Carrot, it doesn't search the deck and it can't interact with your opponent's cards. Sprite Jet, on the other hand, is one of Sprite's key combo pieces and is currently limited in the OCG for how strong it is. Like Sprite Blue and Pixies, Sprite Jet can be special summoned from your hand once per turn by controlling a level or rank 2 monster. But when it's special summoned, instead of searching for monsters, Jet searches for Sprite spells and traps. This is the second key to the entire engine, as every single sprite spell or trap card is very powerful and can even get you to your other sprite monsters. But like with sprite blue, the spell and trap cards you might search will depend on your situation. If you're in need of an extra level 2 body, you might choose to grab sprite starter. Starter is a quick play spell card which acts as an emergency teleport for the archetype and is the third key to the sprite engine, allowing you to special summon any sprite monster from your deck but with two main drawbacks. The first is that you must take damage equal to the attack of the monster you summon, and the second is that you're locked into only being a special summon level, link, and rank 2 monsters for the rest of the turn. Essentially, Sprite Starter represents an extra 3 copies of any sprite name, and you don't even need to control a level 2 monster for it to summon out a sprite, allowing it to be used as a 1 card starter which can get you to blue, and then to any other sprite name, which provides enough material for any other 3 sprite extra deck monsters. Not every deck that plays the sprite cards chooses to play Sprite Starter, since it's one of the only sprite cards that actually locks you in any way, so some decks will only play one copy as a jet search. Although, if you already have a starter in hand, there are plenty of other great search targets for Jet, such as Sprite Smashers. Sprite Smashers has three effects, but only one of those effects is relevant for the Sprite strategies. By banishing a Therion, Sprite, or Spriggans card from your graveyard, you can either special summon a Spriggans monster from your deck, special summon a Therion monster from your graveyard, or lastly, you can banish any level, link, or rank 2 monster you control to banish one card your opponent controls. The third effect is one that sees the most play and is a key part of the most end boards that use Sprites. Being able to banish any card your opponent controls at quick effect speed makes Smashers extremely versatile, as you can either use it to interrupt your opponent by banishing their key combo pieces and boss monsters, or you can deal with an opponent's problematic floodgate like there can be only one or Mystic Mine. In theory, you're giving up a lot with Smashers, as not only do you need to banish a sprite card from your graveyard, you need to banish a Link, Rank, or Level 2 monster on field too. But with how recursive the sprite engine is due to Sprite Elf, and how much advantage a single jet or blue can generate, this drawback very rarely impedes its use. But if you can't spare a monster to banish, Sprite Double Cross also acts as an incredible end board piece to search off of Jet. Unlike Smashers, it's incapable of outing problematic floodgates, but each of its three effects provide with a ton of versatility, since every effect of Double Cross is useful. In order to activate Double Cross, you need to target a monster in the field, or in either player's graveyard, and apply one of the following effects. The first is an archetypal XYZ import, or a pseudo DD Crow, allowing you to attach the monster you targeted to an XZ's monster you control as a material. The second is an archetypal crackdown, which allows you to steal your opponent's monster by placing it to a zone where a link to monster points to. And the third allows you to special summon the targeted monster to a zone where a link to monster points to, like a Call of the Haunted, which lets you target your opponent's monsters as well. Individually, every one of these effects is stellar, as Double Cross gives you a way to remove your opponent's monsters on field. But what it has over Smashers is that it can also interrupt graveyard effects, allowing it to be much stronger when facing a deck like Tier Limit, which is very reliant on its graveyard. Double Cross has a similar role to Red and Carrot, in that they strengthen the sprite end board, but are only played in decks which use an extended sprite package, rather than a smaller one which would rather have Smashers instead due to its versatility as a quick play spell and as an out to floodgates. But like with the monsters, there is still one more lesser played sprite back row. Sprite Gamma Burst is the least played of every sprite card. It's often not played in even the most expanded sprite strategies, as it has less versatility than even Pixies, as at least Pixies is a level 2 body. But being the worst sprite card still makes Gamma Burst decent as it is still a sprite card and can be searched off of Jet. It's a quick play spell which allows you to increase the attack and defense of all of your level, link, or rank 2 monsters you control by 1400. And then, while it's in the graveyard, you can banish Gamma Burst to increase the attack of all level, link, or rank 2 monsters by 1400. But you can only use one effect of Gamma Burst per turn, so you can't stack them for 2800 attack boost to one of your monsters. Basically, Gamma Burst is only really useful as a battle trap to surprise your opponent like Pixies, or to establish OTKs quicker on an open board, which is still pretty useful, and why very expanded sprite engines might play a copy of Gamma Burst in the side, but it's by far the least useful card in the engine, since it doesn't provide the deck with interruption or level 2 bodies. And level 2 bodies are really important for reaching the sprite extra deck monsters, which are arguably the strongest cards in the engine. So much so that they're even run in lists that don't have a single sprite card in their main deck. Such as Sprite Elf. Sprite Elf is a link 2 monster that can be link summoned by using any 2 monsters, provided at least one of them is a level, link, or rank 2 monster. It can't be used as a link material to turn it summon, but has two very powerful effects to make up for that. The first protects every monster it points to from being targeted, stopping your opponent from being able to negate your boss monsters with something like an Imperm or Chalice on both your opponent's turn and your own. 
And if it wasn't valuable enough, Elf can also summon out any level 2 monster from your graveyard as a quick effect speed during the main phase, with this effect being a hard once per turn. Essentially, Sprite Elf represents two bodies on board, one that you summon out during your turn, and one that you summon out during your opponent's main phase. Meaning that even though you need two monsters to summon it, basically getting those two monsters back, making it really valuable to summon, especially when you get the chance to trigger Blue and Jet to search on your turn and your opponents. But that's not all, because if your opponent controls a monster, instead of having to target a level 2 monster in your graveyard to summon, you can instead target a Link or Rank 2 monster in your graveyard instead. This is how Sprite is capable of setting up a board of two negates with only one totally awesome. Sprite's Sprint is a card with similar utility to Elf. Like Elf, Sprint can be summoned with any two monsters, provided that at least one of those materials is a Link, Rank, or Level 2 monster, and it can't be using Link material to turn its Link Summon. But when it's Link Summoned, you can send any Level 2 monster from your deck to the graveyard. A free foolish for any deck that uses Level 2s is absurd, especially given the number of Level 2 monsters with excellent graveyard effects. Nimble Angler is one such card, as when Nimble Angler is sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard, you can special summon two Level 3 or lower Nimble monsters from your deck. And a lot of sprite decks already play multiple copies of Nimble Beaver, since it's a great normal summon that can summon another copy of itself from your deck or graveyard. But, like with Elf, there are plenty of non-sprite decks which can take advantage of Sprint. Most notably is Tier Limits, which can use the effect of Sprint to send Tier Limit merrily to the graveyard. And that's not all, because Sprint has yet another effect which really boosts its power. When another monster is special summoned while you control Sprint, you can detach material from an XE's monster you control to target any monster on the field to return it to the hand. Now, you can only use one effect of Sprint per turn, and only that turn, so you have to choose which effect you want to use on a particular turn. On your turn, you would use Effect of Foolish, but on your opponent's turn, you would use the Bounce. This effect makes it so it doesn't really matter that you can't use Sprint as a Link material on the turn you summon it, because you actually want it on the field. Especially because it gives you a downward facing arrow for double cross. Gigantic Sprite is the final card in the Sprite engine, and it's one of the best tools that Sprite has available. It's a rank 2 monster, and usually requires two level 2 monsters to make. However, Gigantic Sprite also allows you to use any Link 2 monsters you have as materials as if they were level 2. And if Gigantic Sprite happens to have a Link, Fusion, Xyz, or Synchro Monsters material, its original attack is doubled to 3200. But it's not just a generic beat stick. Gigantic's effect gives you access to any level 2 monster in the game, but the strongest lock of any of the sprite cards. During the main phase, by detaching Xyz material from any Xyz monster you control, you can special summon any level 2 monster directly from your deck. But for the rest of this turn, neither player can special summon any monsters other than Link 2, Rank 2, or level 2 monsters for the rest of the turn. Now, this lock is very harsh and it's what gatekeeps a lot of decks from using Gigantic, even if they play level 2 monsters. But this lock also applies to your opponent. This means that once Gigantic has resolved, you are completely protected from Nibiru, Cypher and Gamma, and Bistial monsters. So even with its particular lock being strict, it ends up being a direct benefit of the card. And getting access to any level 2 monster in your deck is absolutely absurd, and is why Sprite has become such an incredible engine. Evil Twin Sprite can make use of it to grab Key Sakil or Li La, Frog and Paleo Sprite can use Gigantic to bring out Swap Frog to go into Totally Awesome, and some Sprite variants even use Gigantic to bring out Nightmare Corruptor Ebly to the field, so they can use it to floodgate your opponent out of special summoning any monsters that aren't links. Now, Gigantic does have its downsides. Its lock is still restrictive and detaches for effect and not for cost. So if all of your Xyz monsters are removed from the field before you can resolve Gigantic, you don't get to summon out your level 2. But the downsides are minor when compared to what Gigantic does for the sprite engine, and it, alongside Elf and Sprint, are integral to the reasons as to why the engine has seen so much competitive play. 